Good afternoon and welcome to our homestead. Look at this beautiful stand of sorghum right behind us. Today we're going to talk about what sorghum is, why it's so important to grow for a self-sufficient homestead, and then we're going to show you how to make syrup. Let's get going. Before I get to making that syrup from our sweet sorghum behind us, let me tell you what it is. It's an ancient grain. It's one of the top five cereal grains in the United States. And it is the grain with the highest amount of protein. The nice thing about this is it's grown in really hot and dry climates like we have in Texas right now. Texas grows about 1.8 million acres of sorghum every year and it's super drought resistant and as you can see it's 100 degrees out here right now. It has no problem with the heat at all. You can see it looks like a grass and it looks similar to corn and it's in the same family but this is not as sensitive as corn and you can plant it uh, spaced really close together unlike corn. A more more additional cool fact is it won't deplete the soil of nutrients as fast as most other grain crops. It only needs uh, nitrogen so it can be top dressed with, uh, with like grass clippings for nitrogen if you even need it and that's even part of the way through the growing season. Grain sorghum usually grows shorter than this about three to four feet tall. This sweet sorghum it can get up to, uh, ours is probably only about seven feet tall, but it can get up to about 12 feet tall. Now you can harvest the grain heads from the sweet sorghum and use them as a grain, but they're not as good as the grain sorghums. The days to maturity on the grain sorghums are usually 90 to 95 days, and for the sweet sorghum it's about 100 to 120 days. But for me, I'm just gonna take these grain heads and give them to the chickens. Sorghum is a common ingredient in chicken feed and it's really good for them. So first things first with these, if they are short enough, just start to harvest the seed heads off of them for your chickens or whatever else you're gonna do with them. And then the next step is going to be to strip the leaves down off of these stalks. And it's easier to do it if they're still standing, but that's really up to you. You can see what I was talking about earlier with how closely these are grown together. And when we harvest these, we just want to come up above the most visible roots. So these actually go all the way down to the ground. Now the reason we want to rip the leaves off of our stalks before we put them through the juicer is they can give the syrup kind of an, a bitter flavor. And these just aren't the best. So pick these off and give them to the chickens too. So we're here in the barn where I have a sugarcane juicer attached to my workbench right here. And we're gonna press out the juice inside of these canes. You'd be surprised how much juice is actually inside of each of these. So let me show you the parts and pieces on this juicer really quick. And if you're interested in one of these, I'll have it linked in the description below the video. So with this machine, it's manual, but I could actually put a belt and a motor on here to drive it if I needed it for a larger harvest. But we're just gonna roll this and you can see inside, it's rolling these, these big, big gripping rollers. And that is gonna squeeze the juice out of the cane or the stalks and down into this reservoir right here. This reservoir has a screen on it, which is good because you're going to get a lot of sediment in your uh, sorghum juice and it's going to need to be filtered out. So we've got this little pan here. I need to find a better spigot for the end of it. But also what we're gonna do is drain that into some cheesecloth and into whatever container we have. Now, I've got a bigger container over here. So it really depends on how much juice you are producing. This is the juice we're gonna take and start to boil down for our syrup. You can set the adjustment of the rollers by these two adjustment knobs up at the top, but ours is set perfectly for this cane. So we're just gonna start rolling it through. That juice is gonna start coming out the bottom right here into this little screen and into our catch pan. You can see how flat these stalks are, or these canes are, as they're coming out the back. If you wanna go a little bit slower and get maybe a little bit more juice, you can. But just go at a good pace and you should extract a lot out of these. These are pretty flat and not really juicy anymore. 
To give you an idea of how much juice this sorghum variety produces, this is about a six foot tall cane, give or take. It's about a half inch wide. I've done five of these and I've got about six ounces of juice. Now that we've transferred all of our sorghum cane juice to this larger vessel, we're gonna take it in the house and show you how to make the syrup. So we're back inside the house and I've got about a half gallon of juice that I've got from that very small stand of sorghum. So it does produce quite a bit of juice. And I've gathered it all in this deep pot here and I've let it sit here for a while so that the starches and some of the other sediment falls to the bottom. So it's important to let it sit for a while and let those starches settle to the bottom. I'm gonna pour off that juice into this wider pan, but you don't want all those heavy starches in there because it will make the syrup really gel up really fast and it won't be a great product in the end. So just make sure you let it sit for a while, maybe strain it one more time and let those starches settle. A lot of people use big wide maple syrup trays to boil their syrup, but we don't have that down here in Texas. I've got about a three inch or four inch deep pan here. It's a wide pan, and this is gonna work fine for the amount that we process. But you want something more shallow and wide for the water to evaporate off a little bit quicker. You see there's a film in the bottom and that's those starches settling down into the bottom. So as you can see, I've got a candy thermometer stuck in our juice and it's not really needed at this stage, but toward the end, when our juice turns from that green to a brownish color, you do not want to get over 225 degrees. This needs to be 224 to 225 degrees exactly to make that syrup. Any more than that, and it's gonna caramelize from a syrup into like a, it'll be like a hard candy. So you don't wanna do that. Throughout the process of this reducing, you're gonna see some foam form on the top. And you wanna take that off with a slotted spoon. That foam is just impurities in the juice that are coming to the top, and you wanna remove that. Just be aware that any amount of juice that you do have is gonna be reduced by about 85% when it hits that syrup stage. So that's another good way to keep an eye on it. Let's let this do its thing and we'll show you the syrup when it's done. So for that amount of juice, we hit our temperature of 224 pretty quickly in about an hour. And we've got our beautiful sorghum syrup right here. I'm gonna pour it into a jar and see how much we got. It's good to use one of these canning uh, funnels here. Makes it a lot easier pouring it out of a big container like this. Well, there you go. We got about a half pint from that half gallon of juice that we did boil down. It's a beautiful golden color and it's the consistency of a maple syrup. It's not super thick like a molasses. A lot of people liken it to molasses because it has kind of a sulfury taste to it, but this one has a little bit of a sour taste to it as well. And it is that thinner consistency. It'd be perfect for like a Chinese sweet and sour dish, but we're probably gonna put it on pancakes also. If you have any questions about making sorghum syrup, leave them for me in the comments section below. And remember, I've got the link to that candy thermometer and the sugarcane juicer in the links below the video. Now go click on this video right here, which is our video on how to lacto-ferment vegetables to preserve them. Have a beautiful, blessed day. We'll see you next time. Bye.